I have to include a quick disclaimer. This video will discuss techniques and tricks that are available in the DAW Cubase. Cubase is by far my most favorite DAW of all time and is the only DAW that has full integration with Vocaloid. The Vocaloid 4.5 editor can be used inside Cubase with the MIDI editor. That being said though, these techniques have probably similar functionalities in other DAWs, so this video is useful no matter in what DAW you work. Let's go make some musical magic. So as most of you know, every song has a certain key. This key decides what the root note is of your song and which notes are included in the key and which ones are not. Every key always has seven unique notes that fit in the key. In which octave these are does not matter. This means that there are always also five notes on the keyboards that don't belong in the key. Let me show you the circle of fifths. So in pop music, there are a total of 12 keys that are used in practicality. These keys are the keys of C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, also known as G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, and B flat. Note that I don't count the parallel minor keys. I consider these keys to actually be their major counterparts for the sake and simplicity of this video. So if I'm talking about the key of C, I'm also talking about the key of A minor because they both consist of the same notes. Let's jump into Cubase. Every key has seven notes. Seven notes that belong and five that don't belong. In a music theory class you would have to learn to memorize what notes belong in what key. There is however an easier way in Cubase to immediately see what notes belong and don't belong in a certain key. So in Cubase you can find this neat little thing called a chord track. So if we go to project add track, chord track, there it is. So now that we have a chord track, if we insert our key at the start of the chord track, so let's get a pencil tool, let's insert a chord. Hey, that's a chord. Key of A, for example. I double on it, A, and there we go. The whole project now knows what notes fall in this correct key and which don't. Let me show you. If I go back to the editor, there we go. It shows us color-coded which notes belong and which don't. If you don't see these colors, it could be that your chord track here is not selected. So if it's on velocity, it will show everything in red. Make sure that everything is a chord track. You can see that the Cubase MIDI editor shows you visually what notes belong and what notes don't belong in the key that we selected. In this case of a major key, the correct notes are on the root note shown in green. So that's the A. Uh. Then we have the major second. Uh, shown in blue, the major third uh, shown in green, the perfect uh, fourth shown in blue, uh, the perfect fifth shown in green, uh, the major sixth shown in blue, uh, the major seventh shown in blue, and of course the octave, uh, which is the same as the root note and is also shown in green. The notes that don't belong in the key are shown in red. These are the uh, minor second, uh, the minor third, uh, the tritone, uh, the minor sixth, and lastly, the minor seventh. This way you can easily see what notes primarily can be used in your key. Please keep in mind that the red notes don't always sound bad. The tritone, for example, is a note that is used a lot in blues music and metal music. It's also sometimes called the blue note and can be a powerful note in your melodies. Please keep an open mind and don't be afraid to experiment. Melody. So creating melodies with Vocaloid is very easy. You can draw the pencil tool like I did here. You can also uh. do stuff like this in the MIDI editor. Uh. This only works with Cubase 4.5. If you want to let this melody be in a Cubase 5 project, let me grab my Cubase 5. In Cubase 5, you would open this up and you would start drawing notes in the Cubase ooh, 5 editor. Ooh, like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. When creating melodies, there are no rules what you should do and what you should not do. There are endless possibilities and methods to create them. I will teach you the easiest and most writer block friendly way. So let's go to this online website called dopeloop.ai. Let's open up our internets. There we go. And we get into a melody generator. Let's press start and here we are. On this website, you can choose your tracks tempo right here. 
So our track tempo is 100 BPM right now. And then let the website automatically generate a melody for you. Let's do that right now. Okay, we can work with this. Let's download this MIDI file. And here we got it, we got a MIDI file. It's fairly easy. In Cubase, you can just drag it in just like this. And we got a new MIDI file. And here you go. Here's the new melody. So let's get rid of this one for now. Let's turn it off and let's work with this new melody right here. Let me put the loop cursor around it. Let's play it. So as you can hear, our piano automatically plays this A, which we don't want. Let's, so let me get rid of this, the data and now we can listen to our melody. Great. Let's double click on it and let's see what happens now. Ah, we see that it's not in the correct key. So let's change it up a little bit. Let's see what happens now. Oh, some notes are still not in the correct key, okay. Let's see if there is a certain key where all the notes fit. Ah, oh, yes, here. So now everything is either blue or either green. So now it's in the correct key. It's just a little bit low. Let's put it one octave higher, shift up. Okay, so now that it's in the correct key, let's listen to it. Perfect. Okay, now we got a melody and we can copy that melody and let it go for another round. Let me get rid of this. So now we have a melody and we can maybe even create some variety. So let's say the second round is a little different. That sounds quite nice. And there you go, we've got a bass for a melody. Harmony. Let's create a simple chord structure that fits with our melody in our key of A. You can do this all by yourself, of course, but I have an easier way for the producer that has no inspiration today. It can happen to any of us. Let's go to another website. Let's go to a website called chordchord.com. And here we are. Let's generate our very own chord progression. You can choose your key. So let's do that. Our key is already in A. That's perfect. We can choose our tempo, which is also already correct. And we can choose how the chords are played. Let's just stay with clean for now. And let's generate our chords. Beautiful, this is great. So now that we have these chords, we need to remember them and insert them into our Cubase chord track. So we have A, C sharp minor seven. Okay, so the second one, I just copy this one and we make this a C sharp, C sharp minor seventh. So the next chord that we got was a B minor seven and a E seven. All right, so let's go here. B minor seven and an E seven was the last chord, E seven. Yes, there we have our chord structure. Now that we have a piano track here, I can just copy these chords here very easily. I just hold my shift button and I drag them to my piano. Now let's listen how that sounds. So the first part sounds pretty bad, but the second part sounds nice. So let's get rid of the first part, insert the first part here and let's copy it. Let's see how that sounds. So this note, this third note doesn't sound right to me. So let's change that one to this note and let's see how that sounds. Well, that sounds pretty okay. I'm gonna tweak this melody just a bit more to make it sound a little bit better. Let's do that, shall we? Note as well that here, for example, C is green, C sharp here is green and here it's blue. That's because on here, it's actually corresponding to this B minor seven chord. So now in the B minor seven, in terms of B, this is a major seventh. 
So it's treating this as a major seventh, even though uh, it's in the key of A, but that's only because the chord track shows a different chord here. So that's really nice for showing the types of notes that you're using at the moment. I think this will sound just fine. And then we go back to A. Great, let's see how this sounds. Okay, let's take this a step further. Let's create a harmony vocal for our Vocaloid. To do this, we only need to duplicate the Vocaloid track to change the harmony. So we press this track, right click, and we say duplicate track. Now we have a second track. The beauty of Cubase is that it can show you both melodies at the same time while making the harmonies. So if I select both tracks, now of course you only see one melody, but if I select this, if I select a note like this and I go up, you can see that it shows the second track behind it. That's really nice. We can quickly create a melody like this. Let's put all the harmony notes a third above the original melody and hear how it sounds. It already sounds pretty good. Let's make this a different color so that we can distinguish it. And let's call this one harmony. Let's listen to it one more time. And there we go. We've got a basic melody, harmony vocal, and chord progression with barely any efforts. Isn't modern technology great? Be creative. I want to emphasize again that using these methods is a very good way to start off a production or play around with ideas. But please keep in mind that there is no correct way of making music. Remember that the sky is the limit. Don't be afraid to take risks or try something new. Even in my own songs that I will showcase in the next video, I use a lot of quote unquote red notes. And I also came up with the chord progression all by myself without generating it. Just be creative and don't be afraid to make what you think sounds good. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you can use these tips in your own productions. Please keep making lots of magical music. Always at your service, Jeremy Dorian. No, the